Hello again, Jim Stewart coming back at you with more American history and more illustrations of the law of gravity that regulates white supremacy that we need to know about in order to be able to wrestle to the ground. Today, we are moving to popular culture. Dose number seven has a title, it's called Simple Amusements, 1920 to 1970. And Simple Amusements is exactly the way that the viewers of what you're about to see thought that they were consuming. Just stuff that was fun. Elements of popular culture that were so commonplace that nobody who's white, who was actually not thinking more deeply, was even aware that there was anything wrong with. This law of gravity, this white noise that we're talking about, can also be compared to the experience of fish who don't know that that's water that they're swimming in. It's just out there. And that's why we are involved with popular culture today. These simple amusements are what white people had fun watching in the period of time between about 1920 and 1970. The first one is Aunt Jemima. The second one has to do with uh, white actors and actresses, cinema people, uh, blacking up. And the third are two very, very famous white comedians playing as if they're black guys, Amos and Andy. So let's cue up Aunt Jemima. And this is a combination of promotion for a pancake mix and at the same time, a comedy show in and of itself. So let's cue up Aunt Jemima and see what she has to say. Aunt Jemima. I wish I was the man that got no time to run the gun of the bay. Smiling, happy Aunt Jemima, famous for her secret recipe, pancakes, waffles, and buckwheat. What's your happy thoughts for today? Well, Mr. Lyon, folks says you can't buy happiness, but you can earn it. Yes, Aunt Jemima, and I guess we all want to be happy. Have you got a tantalating, tantalizing old plantation saying for us today, Aunt Jemima? Yes, sir, one that's especially good these days is that folks who smiles at breakfast mostly don't never need no doctor. A good thing to remember. <laughs> greetings, folks, greetings. This is your old friend, Aunt Jemima. And pleased as punch with yourself this morning, aren't you, Aunt Jemima? <laughs> Close I is, Mr. Lyon. <laughs> Maybe you don't know it, but this year is buckwheat time. And I'm here to tell the ladies how they can happify the whole family with rich and mellow, light and fluffy, tempting Aunt Jemima buckwheat. Mm -hmm. Buckwheat. I love them. Show sure you do. Everybody do. <laughs> And with my secret Old South recipe, anybody can make the most delicious, delectable, delightful, digestible buckwheat cakes in the whole world. Wow, that was a mouthful, Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> you better rest a minute while we hear some music. I don't think it's necessary to comment on what you've just seen. Hattie McDaniel, the actress who's playing Aunt Jemima in this role, is the same Hattie McDaniel who stars in Gone with the Wind as Scarlett O'Hara's loyal, faithful, now emancipated, once enslaved, house servant, body servant. Oh, Mammy, Mammy. You've been brave so long, Miss Scarlett. You just gotta go on being brave. Think about your Paul like he used to be. I can't think about Paul. Can't think of anything but that $300. Ain't no good thing about that, Miss Scarlett. Ain't nobody got that much money. Yeah, nobody but Yankees and Scalloways got that much money now. Where? Who that? A Yankee? Oh. Oh, Mammy, I'm so, so thin and pale and well, I haven't any clothes. Mammy, get on Ma's old box of dress pants. What you up to with Miss Ellen's portier? You're going to make me a new dress. Not with Miss Ellen's portier. Not while I got dress on my body. Great boy. I'm in my portier now. I'm going to Atlanta for that $300, and I've got to go looking like a queen. Who's going to Atlanta with you? I'm going along. That's what you think. I was going to Atlanta with you, with you in that new dress. Now, Mammy, darling. No use to try to sweet talk to me, Miss Scarlett. I know you ever since I put the crisp pad back on you. I said I was going to Atlanta with you, and glad I am. That was 
also one of the most successful roles of an African-American actor uh, that you could find during this period of time. And that's what you had to do in order to be able to make that success happen. Our second video involves people that you know and can recognize on the screen immediately. These are billboard stars from the great age of film, starting in the 1930s and moving on right into 1960s, and involve the business of blacking up. Now, this is a very complicated, much studied phenomenon in American popular culture and American history. The idea that white people can masquerade as black people. The idea of being able to make your face and your body flirt with blackness in a way that allows you to reassert your whiteness all the more. It's a difficult concept to get at, but the idea of blacked up minstrels who are white people as popular culture and entertainment goes back a tremendous long ways in American history. You're only seeing the most modern part of something much more dramatically embedded in American political culture and in American popular culture. But you'll recognize the film stars, you'll see them preparing to make themselves black. I don't think I'm going to have to say anything more to explain to you what's going on. Any number ready. Lights. Many stamps today, give kitties, we'll be blessed, we all invest in the USA. Sammy, my, my Uncle Sammy. Lou Duckstadter would come out on stage and Lou would have a smudge of black on him right up there. Yeah, yeah, and George Primrose had one right down here. That's right, and oh gosh, there were a host of others. Names and fellas like Honey Boy Evans and Bert Williams. Yeah, yeah, and Eddie Leonard and Al Jolson. Oh, man, you're talking about the top there. Oh, I've seen in my time some very funny folks, but the funniest of all I know is a colored individual and you're as alive as black as any black crow. Our last installment is Amos and Andy, and all those of us who are as old as I am, I'm 80 years old now, so I can tell you for sure that Amos and Andy was something that I watched, I listened to religiously on my radio. Amos and Andy were two white guys who played black guys. And they had a whole cast of other white guys who played black guys and white women who played black women. They were on the radio for decades. Their comedy was something that American consumers really did fall in love with as, at the same time, a way to be able to peek into your imagined sense of what it would be like if you were black and what you see in there is something that reaffirms just how cool it is to be white. The actors who are doing this work are very talented. These are people who really can make it happen. The idea that somehow white supremacy is crude, the idea that white supremacy is always hard-edged, is always violent, not at all. What you're seeing in Amos and Andy is something that's alluring, is something that makes you feel like you want to move your defenses downward and be a close-in participant on the joke. And the joke is always at African Americans' expenses. Hello, Charmaine. This is your great big dreamboat, Andy. How is you, you vision of loveliness? Uh, everything okay for tonight, Charmaine? Uh-oh. Oh, he is, huh? Yeah. Well, I'll call you some other time, Charmaine. Uh, why did she break the date, Andy? Oh, she's going out with another guy. He's going to take her for a ride in his speedboat. She said, I'm too dull. I ain't got no glamour. She said, I'm a footy duddy. Well, come on, foot. I'm going to lock up the office now and get on home. How can I get me some of that glamour? Andy, it's going to take all night to figure that one out. Now, just give me the dime for the phone call so I can get on home. Well, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? Oh, yeah, Andy, I trust you. 
But the subway don't trust me. Uh, I'll run you home, Kingfish. Come on. Speedboat. I think I don't buy me one of them little sport model cars, and that'll make Shaw Man think I was a hot rod guy. Andy, forget about her. Now, a lot of other girls will like you just the way you are. Yeah, but who wants to go out with one of them stupid chicks? Look, Andy, take my advice and stay away from the gals altogether. Else you're liable to wind up like me, with a wife to greet you with these ever-loving words. Quote. When are you going to bring home some money? Unquote. The people who are watching this commercial and cultural production, whichever one it is, whether it's Aunt Jemima, Blacking Up, or Amos and Andy, they're not hurting anybody. They're not saying anything nasty in their own mind's eye about anybody at all. They're simply having fun. Well, you and I can look back and know that they are doing exactly that, and that's why they are applying the law of gravity. They're showing up. And African-American people can tune into Amos and Andy just as easily as anybody else can. African-American people can turn on their television sets or on the radio and listen to Aunt Jemima just as anybody else can. The point I've been making all along is that the white noise gets louder, the white noise becomes more all-encompassing, and the law of gravity exerts itself, and white people are showing up. Meantime, in the Chicago Defender, guess who is angry as can be about all these representations. Our good friend and our historical guide, Ida B. Wells. Let's keep remembering her. Mm -hmm.